Good morning and welcome to the Calm Nita Breakfast Show. We are your usual host, Soko and Kalimbula. <laughs> Indeed, thank you so much for choosing Cabinet TV. We are here on your screens mm -hmm. giving you what we know best, which is issues to do with policy and politics and generally the governance system of this country. Indeed, we will tackle a lot of things that have been happening and uh, hopefully our guest shows up so that we can have a fruitful discussion. Exactly. But you two of viewers can start dialing those numbers on your screen so that we get interactive. We can send the text messages and uh, let's talk. Let's, let's have a conversation. Exactly. I think we we'll miss you. <laughs> yeah, we need to make that conversation. <laughs> yeah, we are expecting yeah. to talk to Levan Manduli, the exactly. voice of Munali. The voice of Munali, the, the man from Livingston. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's been... He's anonymous. Been, yes, uh, anonymous sorry. from Chilanda. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, this week have been very quiet. Obviously, they've been doing a bit of farming uh, here mm -hmm. and there, but uh, soon... <laughs> I hope they were affected by, uh, by the floods. You know, right. they, were, they were relocated. They, they were relocated, like the vice president said. Mm -hmm. So we'll help those in need, especially the anonymous from Chilanga, Patrick. Yeah. I think we may need government's help. Yeah, exactly. So. All right. Anyways, we have a number of segments lined up for you as usual. We'll look at how the culture is faring against the major convertibles. We'll also look at the health corner, among other segments. Most importantly, the conversation that we will delve into a little later. Let's look at the health corner just now. Hi and welcome to the Health Corner here on The Breakfast Show. I am Dr. Nakubia Namfaya. So this week we are talking about a condition that we call breast cancer and we have defined what breast cancer is. We said breast cancer is the cancer that occurs in the breast and usually affects both men and women. And when men have breast cancer, it's more fatal than it is in women. And then we also talked about some of the uh, signs and symptoms and we say that when you see any changes in the breast, such as uh, one breast being bigger than the other breast or feeling a mass or a lump in the breast, or if you notice any change in the skin on the breast or in any in the nipple, um, if there's any, any discharge in the nipple, then you'll be able to uh, seek medical attention to be able to treat if you have breast cancer. So today I want to know what exactly is done in the hospital or how is it diagnosed in the hospital and what is the treatment options for uh, breast cancer. So the diagnosis of breast cancer is made usually um, on clinical exam. So you first have to uh, examine the patient. So the doctor has to check exactly where the mass is, how big is the mass, and um, uh, just to check if there's any discharge and any, any discoloration and just how it looks like. The other thing that can be done is an ultrasound. Most people would be sent to do an ultrasound to be able to check exactly um, how the mass looks inside. The other thing that can be done is an MRI to be able to check how the mass is related to other structures in the body. Then usually they would also request for uh, a cone needle biopsy, which is uh, a biopsy where uh, a sample is taken from the mass and then it is sent to the lab to be able to get it tested to check what type of cells are in that mass and are they cancerous or not because sometimes you might just be having a mass in the breast and it's not a cancer. So you might have a benign uh, tumor or a, a benign mass which is not cancerous in the breast and so they will need to take a sample to be able to check if it has cancer cells or is it cancerous or not. So these are some of the tests that can be done in the hospital to be able to assess uh, whether you have breast cancer or not. The other thing is that you'll be able to do other tests as well just to check if there's any metastasis to other organs, if other body parts are affected by the breast cancer in your breast. So how is breast cancer treated? treated how are, what are some of the other options what are the options of uh, breast cancer treatment now there are so many ways of treating breast cancer and depending on 
um, your age, depending on the stage of the breast cancer, they would recommend a certain type of treatment to you. But normally the treatment options are that you can do radiotherapy where you are exposed to radiation uh, to be able to cure those cancer cells or to kill the cancer cells. The other thing is chemotherapy, which uh, they give you some medications that will be able to kill the cancer cells and to shrink the tumor. The other thing that can be given is hormonal therapy, where you are given some hormones that can be able to shrink the tumor as well and to also uh, reduce the risk of it growing bigger in size. The other, there are other medications as well that are given that are not uh, really chemotherapy or hormone therapy but they are just some medications that are used for the treatment of breast cancer. The other uh, treatment option is to do an operation and of course usually the operation would be the end stage. So if you have a breast cancer and you are asked to do a chemo or a radiotherapy, it does not mean that you will not need an operation because if the tumor is shrunken in size, then they can decide now to operate on it and remove it. So treatment options, these are some of the treatment options for breast cancer and um, it will be good to be able to know some of these things so that if you or your loved ones ever have this condition, you'll be able to um, uh, ask your doctors or your caregivers to explain to you what exactly is happening and how uh, the, 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 the treatment of the patient that you are uh, taking care of. So these are some of the ways that you uh, can diagnose uh, breast cancer in the hospital. So today we're talking about diagnosis and treatment and we say that breast cancer can be diagnosed in the hospital by clinical examination, doing an ultrasound, doing an MRI, and most importantly, doing a needle biopsy where a sample is taken and it's taken to the lab to check if there are any cancer cells. And also we say that treatment includes uh, hormone therapy, chemotherapy, and even radiation therapy, and also surgery as well. So I do hope you have learned something and make sure you watch again tomorrow where we'll be talking about how you can prevent yourself from having breast cancer. What are some of the things that you can do to prevent yourself from getting breast cancer? Because yes, you can do certain things at home, and also we want to know exactly how is it that we can take care of our breasts at home. So make sure you watch tomorrow's episode where we'll be talking about prevention of breast cancer. And if you missed anything here on The Breakfast Show, make sure you watch my YouTube channel where I post all these videos and you'll be able to know exactly what you have missed in the past. So thank you for watching and I'll see you again tomorrow. Welcome back. You're still watching the Cabinet Breakfast. In case you are just joining us, you haven't missed uh, a lot, and uh, we are mm -hmm. just getting started. Exactly. And we did our first segment, that is the health corner. Let's look at how the quacha is faring against the major convertibles. So one greater British pound is buying at a 25 quacha 14 way and selling at 25 quacha 19 way. One US dollar is buying at a 20 quacha. 72 ngwe and selling at 21 kwacha 13 ngwe the euro is buying at 22 kwacha 35 ngwe and selling at 22 kwacha 79 ngwe the south african rand is buying at 1 kwacha 13 ngwe and selling at 1 kwacha 15 ngwe those are your money market and the figures do not lie it figures can indicate lie. to you you've seen that the rand is also yeah yeah it's, yeah, it's, it's doing it's, wonders yeah. to us mm -hmm. you know because yesterday it was about one quarter 10 11 something mm -hmm. like that today it's 13 one quarter one three way yes i think that's too much it's getting too pompous it's, it's getting too pompous it's bullying us mm -hmm. day by day you know day by I, day. I mean this is something that we don't need to actually accept and uh, condone but the dollar is still at 21 cards and patrick mm -hmm. <laughs> now ask me why i keep smiling when i talk about the dollar being at 21 yes cards. tell me that <laughs>
-hmm. and that's what, what does it, it mean? It, it means something to me and my press. <laughs> so, yeah. so you must be a happy person. A little. On an individual basis, yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. At individual level, yes, but uh, on a national level, I think it's not a good thing. We talked about it yesterday, mm -hmm. and we surely hope that the authorities and everybody else that can offer sound advice on how this can be done, uh, it would be better. But like I mentioned yesterday, it's not something that you can just wake up and do and say, okay, we're going to do this, we're mm -hmm. going to do this. There's need for other things to be put in place, and we surely hope that those things are uh, being put in place so that um, the quacha stabilizes. We can't continue to move in that direction, Patrick. We've been, mm -hmm. it's, it's been depreciating for the past two, three months. Yes. It, it hasn't really been stable for some days. You know, you find that my low after maybe two days, it has even jumped to a one quarter. That's a lot of money in business. Mm -hmm. When yeah. you look at uh, economic fundamentals, yeah. the, the quarter performance itself tells us how the Zambian economy is uh, not, uh, that it is not doing good. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it is a, a good indicator for you to assess whether this economy is stable or not. So if you see how the quarter, the quarter means a lot to, to us because mm -hmm. Everything else um, revolves a a around the quacha, especially that now we have moved to cost-reflective uh, tariffs for, for fuel, whereby they want us to be paying as the market reflects. Mm -hmm. It means that we have to move alongside the quacha. Means, so uh, mm. I, I know that uh, we are not yet at that actual reflective because of some taxes that are being suspended to just make sure that the price does not over increase. All the same, the, 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 the situation is not good because it's, the way the quarter is performing, it shows that ERB will also give us a negative statement. Mm -hmm. We call mm -hmm. it negative because mm -hmm. we don't like it. We don't like there that. There are things that, um, it that threatens, affect uh, it threatens yeah. our, our pockets. Yes, things that, that <laughs> undermine your salary, things that undermine our earnings, everything, <laughs> you know. So if you look at the aspect of fuel, it is really it has really affected um, uh, Zambians a lot, especially business entities. In that uh, planning has been difficult, and uh, it brings me to another interesting uh, issue, Sharon, that we have not we have not, we have not paid attention to. It is the issue of um, uh, suppliers, or for example, or even procurement the procurement process. So when I was attending one of the committee meetings at Parliament. Uh, it was actually observed that there was actually a need to ensure that uh, the price index should be revolving around the quacha uh, fluctuation. Because you can imagine, you have been given a contract to supply uh, uh, to supply uh, rice to, to the defense wing, mm -hmm. then um, you were saying to say, Pebaga will be selling at a uh, hundred quacha. Now, you just, if the quacha misbehaves, it means that you go into in, in a loss mm -hmm. because you will supply, but by the time you are going to buy, you may discover that the quacha as uh, is no longer doing the, no same, longer, yeah, the same. Yeah. So you discover that you end up spending more. Mm -hmm. Now it it gets to to eat into your prof profit. Profit. So that that's why they were suggesting that even the procurement process, there's a need to show that the pricing index reflects the 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 current the, the current market. Uh, market. Yeah, because. That's the only way you can be assured of you getting whatever, whatever value for your money. Yeah, because especially when you're dealing with government, mm -hmm. really, they take very long to make payments. Sometimes it would even take a year if you're unfortunate, you know. You yes, supply yes. them with uh, goods and services, and then it takes a year for them to pay you for the service that you offered to them. I mean, the money has even lost value, probably, mm -hmm. you know. So... That's a welcome move. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that it is actualized. Otherwise, ish, when you're doing business yeah. with government, my friend. Even you as a business lady, you ish. can imagine when you were, you were, you were bringing uh, stuff uh, at, uh, when the quarter was at 15 quarter against uh, mm. one US dollar. Mm. Now it's at 21. 21. It's going but to you, 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 you know, you keep having prices that are fluctuative as well. Mm -hmm. Because, for example, you, you, you sell, we sell clothes, and then you order this outfit today, it's mm -hmm. at this rate. And probably next time it's on a different rate, you know. But you still have the same product in the store. Mm -hmm. You just want to uh, uh, order it again so that you beef up on what you already have, mm -hmm. and then you find that e maishti maybe it's just figurative speaking, maybe a twenty kwacha, mm -hmm. and then you're selling it at uh, twenty five. Next time you go and order, you are ordering it at 25. And you're selling at 30. Yes, you're selling at 30. It's the same product. So, so now you're disturbing your clients. Exactly, exactly. You find that, no, mm. but we, we, we ordered. And you know, there are those that want to buy in, in, in bulk. Mm -hmm. And then you say, okay, I've got probably two dozens of what you want. 
and then let me order more mm -hmm. so that you, I give you five of what yeah. you want. You find that you know, first, you order them less. Now the second batch, expensive. But you find that to say, but yeah. how can you charge us? But the money to us are ni twenty five. After money to us are thirty kwa cha. What is that? You know, people don't want that. It's really affecting mm. business. Mm. Indeed, it's really affecting business. So we want a stable currency. I think is key to ensuring that people's uh, pockets are full mm -hmm. you know more money in their pockets and uh, the economy stabilizes a lot of business transactions here and there so yeah. that is what we are hoping for at the end of the day we will continue to track how the culture is faring mm -hmm. and we'll be giving you those updates remember they also vary from one financial institution to another however they still trade within the same range and uh, there's there's no much of a difference however let's look at one of the stories that made headlines yesterday where the patriotic front has threatened to ask the other southern african countries to declare war against the leadership of president haka in the hitchlema if zambia continues to abrogate the argument of non-alignment on conflicts outside the continent and the region addressing the media in lusaka wednesday patriotic front acting Vice President Given Luenda say the Sandic Extraordinary Troika Summit held in Namibia on the 31st of January 2023 adopted the draft African Union declaration against the U.S. countering Mali. What was it? Malay. <laughs> Malay reaction activities in Africa's act. Let's look at this story. I don't understand this word, Patrick. You have to explain. <laughs> Let's look at this story. Their quest to continue offering checks and balances to the current United Party for National Development, UPND, the Patriotic Front, PF, have threatened that they will compel the Sadiq member countries to rise against the leadership of President Hagainde Hichlema if Zambia continues to abrogate the argument of non-alignment on conflict outside the continent and the region. Addressing the media in Lusaka Wednesday morning, Patriotic Front Acting Vice President Given Winter, who was in the company of other party officials, says the Southern African Development Community, during its 42nd Ordinary Summit of Heads of State and Government, held on 17th and 18th August in Kinshasa, vehemently expressed their collective opposition to a proposed United States law on countering Russian influence and activities in Africa. Mr. Lubinda has, however, wondered why President Hagainde Hitchlem has taken a stance to condemn Russia when Sadiq leaders agreed that there will be none aligned. To express himself for the position that Sadiq took on the so called countering malign Russian activities in Africa. He must pronounce himself to that. If he doesn't, he's letting down his fellow Sadiq presidents. Because before becoming a member of the global body of presidents, he is president of Zambia. Secondly, he is president of the region called SADIC and is a member of the African Union. You cannot purport to defend the interests of the larger society if you cannot protect the interests of your own close society. His number one electorate is Zambia. His number two electoral college is the SADIC. He is called upon to stand up and defend the SADIC position. Failure of which we shall lobby all other Saudi countries to declare him a non-friendly president. The opposition leader also wants the president to make it clear that the visit of U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris will have nothing to do with promoting values and cultures that is not supported in Zambia, such as the promotion of homosexuality. In similar vein, we call upon President Againde to inform the organizers of the summit, as well as his co-hosts, that LGBTQI practices in Zambia are against the law and should therefore not be part of the agenda of any part of the summit. It is illegal. And because it is illegal, nobody should come and impose discussion around it in Zambia. Meanwhile, former Health Minister Professor Nkanduluo has dispelled accusations that the Patriotic Front established the LBTQ clinic at UTH but instead says the clinic was meant to fight the spread of HIV and was open to all Zambians. Amongst them were the sex workers and uh, the men who were having sex with men. And um, I think the decision that was made by the UNAIDS was that uh, we should not deny people services. That doesn't mean that a, a clinic was set up for LGBTQ. There was access by everybody to be able to access services. Prudence Chota reporting.
Kami TV News. Former Republican President Edgar Lungu since his retirement has been seen rallying political commentaries. This has attracted the attention of government, further challenging him to clearly state if he wants to return to active politics or not. Responding to a question raised by the media Wednesday, 22nd March 2023, on why the government allegedly gets agitated whenever Mr. Lungu passes political comments, Minister of Infrastructure and Urban Development Charles Milupi says that the government is at liberty to respond to comments as Mr. Lungu's political stance remains unknown. It's the he has to make up his mind. Is he a retired president or is he in active uh, politics? If he's in active policy, two things will happen. First of all, uh, his retirement package, by law, by constitution, will have to fall away. Secondly, the respect that the retired head of state gets by government not commenting and so on, that will go away. Because then politicians, including myself, including the sitting president, will react whenever a political statement is made. If he had gone somewhere, you know, to, uh, uh, to for his family and so on, nobody would bother that. But if he makes a political statement, meanwhile. Mr. Milupi has dispelled all allegations labeled against him by Lumezi lawmaker Mr. Munir Zulu that he is being investigated by the Anti-Corruption Commission, ACC, for corrupt practices involving 250,000 U.S. dollars. And the commission has disclosed that it is not investigating the said cabinet minister over any alleged corrupt practices, stating that the minister in question has never been summoned by the commission to appear before it for interrogations. The first allegation is that uh, for the last two weeks, I have been uh, summoned and have been appearing before the anti-corruption commission for the last two weeks. From the outset, let me tell, I should tell the nation that that is totally false. I have not <coughs> been summoned by the ACC. And most importantly, I have not been appearing before any office of the ACC. The second allegation is that by bank transfer, I was paid a sum of uh, $250,000 by a company uh, which Honorable Muniazo chose not to disclose. No such amount has been transferred by anybody into my account. Beatrice Chabaya, Cabinet News, Lusaka. Weekly meetings there from uh, the Ministry of Information and Media. She did promise uh, the media that she mm -hmm. will be engaging with us from time to time to clarify on uh, the governance issues and how far the government is doing, especially after the cabinet meetings. She said she will uh, be updating the media. Even though she doesn't talk as much, you know, she'll just introduce the... <laughs> she's she's <laughs> the, the PR of, of, of all is Yeah, she'll just... She, she's like the MC. Mm -hmm. for yeah. She's the MC. Yes, she has you know, to. She'll yeah, just yeah. Introduce them. To say no. Today we have Minister of Infrastructure and Development. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have Minister of what, 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 and then you know she will, she will usher the, the whole conversation towards them. So yeah, she she didn't say much as usual. She was just hosting, and uh, Ed Galungo is always uh, 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 on, on the topic of discussion of late, especially the time that he started checking from one church to another. Patrick, <laughs> you too can give us your perspective, our dear viewers, in yeah. case uh, you want uh, uh, to say something pertaining to. Uh, former President Ed Galungo returning to active politics, or should he state his position? You yeah. can give us your views uh, on the number that is on your screen uh, so that we can get interacting. Though that, the other story we were looking at is also pertaining to um, uh, Minister of Infrastructure Development. Mm. That's uh, Mr. Charles uh, Mirupi, who uh, is just uh, trying to dispel allegation against corruption. That's the, that's the same story where he also, uh, is also trying to put... Uh, uh, from uh, from uh, Ed, President Edgar Lungu into the ring so that they can uh, face each other head on as politicians. Now the other the other in, in, in interesting um, story is where the PF uh, is uh, saying that it is going to incite uh, other SADC uh, member countries. Uh, 
to ensure that uh, they declare war against uh, President Hagen Dechirima for siding mm -hmm. with the United States in uh, and uh, and uh, in especially pertaining to the matter of uh, Russia Ukraine war in that uh, Z Zambia is an unaligned uh, country but also the African Union are uh, resolved to ensure the, to ensure that it is not aligned to any to any in, anyone when it comes to a uh, conflict matters in terms of aligning itself so they the 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 continent itself uh the 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 the, the, oh, the sadic rather itself no, not the african union sadic member countries during the troika meeting did resolve to say we are an aligned an aligned and non aligned non -aligned um, uh, uh, members, uh, members. so uh, collectively zambia has been a member of uh, the sadic and it will be taking over the champion the ch chairmanship it is important that uh, zambia also honors their commitment but again the pf is taking extreme measures wow. Let's it's get always, that call. Let's. You are through to the program. Good morning. I am I am quiet. 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 I Jonas, they are just hitting the nail on the head. They don't even want to beat by the bush. By the bush. No. So yeah, you yeah. too can have your say on what's been happening, especially to the former president Edgar Lungu, mm. and uh, his uh, purported comeback to active politics. Yeah. According to uh, a letter that was circulated at some point, he had uh, immediately resigned from active politics, and uh, of late we've seen a comeback of him. Mm -hmm. You know, issuing these. Uh, uh, political statements, political mm -hmm. stance, you know, mm -hmm. where he goes in the supermarket, no, he starts uh, doing this, you yes. know, he goes in the pulpit, he starts doing this, you know, so uh, if you uh, have been following politics, you know very well that this but, man... But, but I think the church is also partly to, to, to blame, to blame for you it. understand, you know, uh, what, what should happen is that when someone goes to church, what, is it necessary for you to give them a pulpit? And, and they always do that. I think so. Why can't they just, you know, worship and leave? Worship and leave. Mm. You know, if the journalists have a question to the uh, questions to ask the former head of state, I'll do that. And mm -hmm. probably they even ask the, the appropriate questions yeah. that befit the former head of mm. state. As opposed to when he's allowed to just see free flow. To, to, to just and, speak. And, and, to and, use the pulpit. That's confusion. To use the pulpit and, uh, uh, you know, say all sorts of things <laughs> uh, uncontrollably, for lack of a better term. Sometimes I feel people mm -hmm. get excited, you know, the euphoria, that euphoric environment. And I what? just... Mm -hmm. You know, it just mm -hmm. makes you say things. You know, you know when people are cheering. Mm -hmm. I want to say, say, I hope I surround myself with the you know? people who are right. I mean, uh, Sharon, just... I mean, Kaluba, Elijah. You know, I hope you people will not mislead me in everything <laughs> that I do. <laughs> My friend, we are cheerleaders <laughs> because you know, I think you know what that means. I think the born from Mr. Joyce is. <laughs> and <laughs> you know what that means when people are cheering you. You know, you you just up, yeah. you just you just enjoy the moment, and you know. In that moment of enjoyment lies the devil, for lack of a better term. I'm speaking like a preacher woman now. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're, you're, you're very comfortable, you think everything is going well, you know, mm -hmm. you're just living your life, you ignore the voice of the devil that comes to whisper to you and say, Can you Lufiana hear? <laughs> you know, and then you listen to you, you won't even listen to it, mm -hmm. you just move with the flow you know at the highest peak of success that's where the downfall is 
So you need to be very careful mm -hmm. with whatever you do. Equally with uh, these uh, political party leaders that go to church to worship and they're given the podium at the end of the service to actually say something. I think they should use the pulpit to unite the country, to call for peace, love, unity, and not use it for anything away from those things. So, yeah, so let's also pick another call. Hello, good morning. How are you? Hello. I kindly speak up. You're a little bit faint. From Solazi. Okay, tell us your name. Uh, and, and okay, you, you, you're calling from Solazi. You say you are? Okay, the line is not very clear. Like I said, kindly speak up a little. Felix. Felix. Okay, okay you can go, go ahead. ahead with your contribution. <sighs> the line is pretty, pretty, pretty not. Hello, you can con you can continue. Hello. Yes, we can yes, hear you now. Hear you now. Hello. Yes. yes, we can hear you now. Are you okay. Yes. Um. I think we've, we've got to cut the call and you call us again so that we can get you clearly. The line is... Okay, uh, please, Detective, can we hang, hang this call? We, really, for me, I can't yeah, so get we, anything. Yeah, we, yeah, we can have I, a bit yeah. uh, line, so maybe it calls, mm -hmm. it calls us back. Yeah, yeah, just call us back so that we can interact and conversate properly, because uh, mm -hmm. that was the one way but, but But one thing I picked is that uh, there's the too much hypocrisy, <laughs> and there's the, the former head of state. It's also at liberty to go. Uh, to, of yeah. course, of course. Uh, freedom of uh, movement, expression. I think, I'm, I'm not a government spokesperson, but I think this is one everyone thing that... Everyone else is guaranteed. Yes, everyone is, else is guaranteed, and this is one thing that uh, this administration uh, has, propagating. is propagating. I, uh, we don't know to what extent it, it is in terms of uh, truthfulness, but they've talked about it on a number of occasions, and uh, the president, former president is at liberty indeed, like any other person, to go to church, to mingle with people. But what people are talking about or are picking out is that using the pulpit to... To, to politic, you know, to say things that may anger other people. For me, if you ask me on a personal level, I would rather each political party, not specifically pointing out the former president, but any political figure that goes to church, to use the podium to just speak unity, to speak love. That's There's a lot of things that's, that's going But on. you see now, the, you know? that's the mistake, mm -hmm. and we're seeing mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, churches in the quest to fundraise. Uh, um, they are they're inviting these politicians, and these politicians. I've got to also, you know, there's, yeah, no, there's no way of you, you invite a guest of one and you want them to go that communicating to the people. So that's they are putting themselves in a fix. But mm -hmm. you know, there is no uh, there's no harm in, in in just making sure that uh, you just acknowledge the person and thank mm -hmm. the person, mm -hmm. and uh, as opposed to giving them the giving them the puppet. The I remember problem. the Catholic Church had uh, put up uh, uh, stiff measures uh, 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 on on that aspect. Yeah. But you are saying even the UPND itself. Some of its leaders, you've seen them, they've been moving from one church to the other to also do the same things, mm -hmm. you know. So because now church now have been turned into a, a political uh, a playing it's ground. But you know, churches, ground. that's why we find a common ground where yeah. it doesn't matter which political party yeah. you're coming from. But no, you know, if we start uh, uh, making sure that making, uh, allowing politicians to dominate the churches, now we, we bring confusion among members because they've yeah. said this mm -hmm. guest of honor they're bringing is mm -hmm. from PF. Me, I'm your PM in this church. Who is he? Who invited and, this and, person? And one day we'll see five. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> that's why we are heading. We'll be heading that, to that yeah. direction. And yeah. it, it's more common during the uh, election time. Mm. We, you'd see that uh, even us as the media, we are invited to every from one church to the other. To the other. It's the most time we worship. We worship. Because we like to worship on Sunday. Because we tend to cover this 
political figures from one church to another you know sometimes if if you are you are, you are, you are lucky or blessed on that particular i don't want to say unfortunate you have three churches uh, yes. in, in a day, in a day. On a good Sunday, you know, we are in the morning. On a good Sunday. <laughs> Yeah, you have the vice president morning from 8 to 10. Mm -hmm. Then you have a leader of the opposition from 10 30 to what you know, like mm -hmm. for us Catholics, we've got three services, so yeah, 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 you can manage, yeah. <laughs> you know, much more yeah, things like that. So, let, let's pick this call. Hello, good morning. Hello, hello, good morning. Fine, thank you. Tell us your name and where you're calling from. Uh, yes, sir, man. from Kitwe. Yes, uh, I just wanted to say that uh, mm -hmm. the 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 Yeah. Indeed, Mario, there you too can have your say on um, some of the stories that made headlines as of yesterday and setting the tone for today as we transition into our main news in the evening and uh, look around for what's happening in the country. Remember that this is your platform and you can join in the conversation by dialing the numbers that are scrolling on your screen. And uh, you can also send us those text messages so that we can conversate. If you can't call, Text us. We want to hear. Exactly. Let's also look at uh, one story uh, pertaining to Mutendele, where uh, it's a dramatic story that was. I, I'm told. I'm minutes. told it's a very dramatic story, and I can't wait to watch. And uh, I missed it yesterday. I, I must have started watching a little bit late. Mm -hmm. But let's look at this Mutendele story. We'll talk about it after it. The traders at Lusaka's Mtendere market have been left mesmerized after information that a woman who is believed to be based in Chongwe district but came to conduct charcoal business was seen stuck with a lover who she decided to have fun with at a named lodge in the area after she finished selling a merchandise. The traders interviewed have explained that confusion almost erupted at Mtendere market in the evenings of Tuesday, 21st March 2023, where the two had been rushed. Those spoken to have explained what transpired. Because Ukasi amamuna kunyumba mukumbukire ibarako vonse de wapeza kumbukira mamuna wako kuto ine imamwa wa maziko mwana ukondani na imamwa nikonda bati ndine wako atiriwa for others 
This information is a warning to others who they say are in a habit of cohabiting with other people's spouses. <laughs> But police deputy spokesperson Danny Mwale when contacted for a comment told this reporter that police received the information of the two suspects but that by the time police rushed to the clinic they could not find the two victims but only a crowd of people that had gathered to witness the abomination. The report, we heard about the report like you are saying. Then when we followed it, we just found a lot of people from Tendere Clinic. They demanded to see those people. And then, then they were threatening to break down the, 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 the clinic. Until police searched around, they found there was nothing and they dispersed the people. Yeah, I don't know if it's true, but he asked, we believe not until we see. Meanwhile, Levi Mwanawasa Hospital Public Relations Officer Chizongo Tembo, when contacted, confirmed that the hospital received rumors of the two victims being referred to the hospital from Umtendere Clinic, but that the two never reached the facility. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So, unfortunately, we don't have um, those patients admitted here. They were referred here, but they didn't end up at Levi, so we don't know where um, they, they have gone. For now, it is still not clear if the incident actually occurred as the whereabouts of the two suspects still remain unknown. Prudence Chota, reporting for Kane TV News. Welcome back. Here's to watching the Calmnet at Breakfast Show. We're zooming in some of the stories that were making the headlines in the Calmnet menus. And that's a story uh, where in, in Tendele where it's a bizarre incident, Tell me incident about where it. we issues pertaining to Marito. Tell me about it, Patrick. And Tell me about they did some charms to make sure that uh, the, 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 the man yeah. and the wife they and his, the wife they are stuck so that the uh, they should learn their lesson for <laughs> for adultery. I, 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 I honestly, <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is quite an interesting story. I honestly can't believe this, and mm -hmm. I just think it's one of those story I'm uh, you know. But if you ask me, that's what I was also telling Prudence to say, Prudence, you know what? <laughs> You're not going to convince me if uh, you don't have those uh, pictures. People, yes, uh, and, and yes. those those people, so they can show an an eye. Yes, they can speak for themselves. If you don't have a couple. So, so for me, that is it's really easy. It's <laughs> true amazing. <laughs> but everyone else was convinced in in Mutendere in that area. Know, I'm sure they saw it. You know, it's a, it's this story is similar to that of a coffin that was very common in southern province at some point. Mm -hmm. The coffin which would refused to be buried. You know, I I really didn't believe that story. Up to today, I still don't believe it. But people say it, it was true, and it took a long time for 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 the coffin to be buried. Hello, good morning. Hello. Hello. Good, yes, morning. good morning. Morning, how are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? Fine. Tell us your name and where you're calling from. Uh, this is Charles calling from Soweto. All right, Charles. I want to make a contribution, madam. Yes, go ahead. Uh, concerning the issue of uh, of going present. Mm hmm Former uh, president. You see, uh. Friends, 
then you expect yourself to do what? So that is very bad. I think the difference you also are aware is that the social confidence in the present is not as strong as it is. In order for us to move on in a good way, Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Thank you so much. Alright. Thank, Thank you so much. much. So much. So they are representing doing what they know best. Thank mm. you for following. And you too can have your say on the conversation we're having this morning. We played two stories and uh, clearly one of them, we played about four stories, Patrick. Mm. And uh, two of them have uh, taken center stage where president, uh, former president, um, Edgar Lung is being challenged to actually state his, his position. political position uh, since he is in retirement, at least according to what, uh, we know. To what we know. He is in retirement and he doesn't need to be uh, very active in politics, but of late, really, he has been very active. And there's a rumor that he wants to stand in 2026. I stand to be corrected. It's a rumor. <laughs> exactly. I, I don't want to be yeah, corrected. And, and some media platforms have been actually indicating the comeback of uh, yes. this year. Yes. So, actually, let's just take a short break. We'll be back uh, with our interview of the day. Stay tuned. She has continued appearing before the subordinate court in Lusaka seeking justice in a case she has accused a man identified as Shadrick Ankandu of administering a known substance on her left arm on pretext that it was family planning. Last year, 31-year-old Nancy Musonda had her arm amputated after a self-proclaimed medical doctor of Chazanga compound in Lusaka allegedly administered a birth control injection on her. Wednesday, when the matter came up before Magistrate Crispin Hampungani for continuation of trial, a medical doctor, Hamovari Muziambo, testified that the complainant's arm became sore and started discharging pus. The witness further informed the court that the victim's arm became worse, leading to her arm being amputated at the University Teaching Hospital. Meanwhile, another state witness has testified how he conducted blood samples on the victim which turned out to be negative, adding that there was no poisonous which was detected in the alleged substance that was administered on her arm. In the previous court session, the victim had testified that on the 11th of August 2022, the accused Hankandu, who was introduced to her by a neighbor, administered a known substance, claiming it was a birth control drug. The mother of five had indicated that she paid a 20 quarter for the service afterward, However, a few days later started to experience pain. The matter stand adjourned to the 25th of April, 2023. Miriam Kaimba, reporting for Kamne TV News. Hello everybody, this is Bishop Benjamin Duba from South Africa. I'm so excited to, to actually come uh, to Lusaka, uh, Zambia and that is on the 1st April of 2023. And so I'll be at uh, Mulungoshi International Conference Center for Ubuntu Talks uh, uh, Benefit Concert. Yes, Ubuntu Talks Benefit Concert. It, it's going to be starting at 6 p.m. up until around 9 PM. I'm looking forward to actually see you there. Please get your ticket as soon as possible. I'm looking forward to, to really be in the presence of the Lord with you and let us enjoy and be blessed. The Benefit Concert for Ubuntu Talks takes place on the 1st of April, 2023. Tickets, 750 kwacha VIP, 550 kwacha premium, 350 kwacha general admission. Get your tickets from Radio Christian Voice, 5FM Radio, Image Promotions, Bantam at Arcades, and Compute Tickets. For further inquiries, please call 0976-962616 or 0977-857754. We're 
Welcome back. You're still watching the Cabinet Breakfast and Answered. Like we promised, we've been joined by Central Province Minister, who is also Mumbwa Member of Parliament, Mr. Creighton and Joa. We'll discuss a number of issues happening in Central Province and also a subsection of Mumbwa where he comes from and he represents those people. Now, Central Province has slightly uh, over 2 million people huge 2.5 million people that's a huge population and uh, a lot of districts in it about 11 11 districts. 11 districts you have traditional leaders you have a lot of people that you're overseeing yeah. how easy is it for you to manage <laughs> such a huge yeah. <laughs> huge population yeah like mm -hmm. the, the, with how many uh, uh, constituencies 16 16 constituencies it's that big like the father of the province how easy is it for you to manage and coordinate this uh, uh these these groupings you know thank you very much and uh, good morning to our viewers first of all i want to be grateful for the invitation to come and appear here as a representative of the people of central province just from your opening remarks mm -hmm. yes central province is vast mm -hmm. with a population of 2.5 million people 11 districts mm -hmm. 39 traditional leaders, it is quite hectic, yeah. but it is uh, something that we need to manage because that's what is called work. So we have to work and uh, manage the province. So we are managing. And the duty mm -hmm. of the central province in terms of representation in parliament is a hybrid kind of arrangement mm -hmm. where we have got nine members of parliament from the ruling party OPND. We have got uh, uh, six, four, four MPs from the opposition mm -hmm. uh, PF. We have got uh, two independent. Independent. So it's a hybrid arrangement. The independent ones working with the ruling party. Uh, interesting. Now some are working <laughs> with the ruling party, others probably with the opposition. Yes. Now to just also uh, mm -hmm. get started with uh, our interview, we understand that uh, Central Province also has quite a number of mines and mining is also an, among the major economic activities in central uh, province. Let's, uh, let's uh, resort to how are you making sure that uh, the locals benefit uh, from the mining sector in, uh, in this uh, province. Also, especially uh, pertaining to Mumbwa, where we, have, we had seen quite a number of illegal mining activities. And how are you trying to make sure that you, you create a conducive environment, in, in, conducive environment for, for, for the locals and foreign investors to actually uh, collaborate and be able to undertake mining activities? Well, you are right, Mumbwa. Uh, Central province is endowed with a number of uh, mineral resources mm -hmm. and uh, out of the 11 uh, districts, all the 10 districts have got uh, their diverse uh, mineral resources. Mm -hmm. got copper, gold, zinc, manganese, from Mumbai to Serenje, except Istanbul, uh, no, no, except uh, Ngawe. That's where we, we have not yet, but we are very uh, sure that even in Ngawe finally, Minerals mm -hmm. will be found for it being near to Mumbwa and also Copper Belt. Yes. To manage all these uh, issues, you recall that also Kabwe mine is the first mine, mm -hmm. if I'm yes. not mistaken, mm -hmm. in the country. Yes. Yes. So, Central Province has been a mining province from a very long time. To manage all these things, first of all, I want to give credit to His Excellency the President and his government for coming up with the ideas and policies that uh, ensuring that uh, local people mm -hmm. begin to benefit out of these uh, natural resources that are endowed in the country and also in central province. So as provincial administration, we are taking a leave from what the Ministry of Mines is trying to come up with. First of all, there were a lot of illegalities. Yes, we inherited a very nasty situation, so to say. Thousands of people doing illegal mining. Kadaism at that time was at its apex. So, when we came in, His Excellency the President declared that no Kadaism, no lawlessness. Mm -hmm. This has really helped us to control these natural resources or mineral resources in the province. We have removed those huge numbers of people from the mining areas and uh, the Ministry of Mines, the action that they took to reorganize the cadastra, 
so that the licenses can be given in a normal way. That is helping us now because we have situations where one individual could have over 90 licenses. How is that? Mm. So we have to regulate that. We have to regulate that so that we start seeing more people participating in the mining areas and also our people getting consents from the license holders and be capacitated to become efficient and effective and begin to benefit. And also Royal Highnesses, those where the mine tenements are, uh, are situated, they start benefiting not only the Royal Highnesses, but the chiefdoms as well. So the policy of government on the mining uh, uh, industry is helping us as a province to control and manage. And we are hoping that in the next few years, central province will start benefiting from these mineral resources than the way it was in the past that few individuals mm -hmm. were benefiting and government was not benefiting. Allow me to also, since as, as we are managing time, mm -hmm. <laughs> allow me to also ask you this uh, important aspect of, we've seen that uh, Kawe is also known for the famous Mulungushi textiles. Mm -hmm. Are we going to see this administration employ the PF tactic where during elections, yeah, Mulungushi te textiles is up and running it's and during, after elections are over, it goes back because, to a white, yeah. being a white elephant. Is, is it the same uh, uh, formula you are using? Is there hope really for that um, uh, industry to be revived? We wouldn't want to take the trajectory of uh, using Rungush textile as a, as a carrot for the pot. Mm -hmm. You recall that from the time when we took up office, I personally have invited, uh, visited the, 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 the plant, mm -hmm. the minister in charge of defense, because they, that industry is under defense, yes. also came. And we have gone around. Mm -hmm. Murungush Textile is a partnership between the Chinese government and the Zambian government. Exactly. So the two partners are working together. And discussions are being undertaken mm -hmm. to see how quickly, because what is there is that the, the machinery which is there is obsolete. Mm -hmm. They need to be taken away. And in their agreements, I think there is a partner who is supposed to have brought in the new equipment so that production can begin. So that's where the issue is. It's a matter of the uh, Ministry of Defense mm -hmm. taking up that matter. They have reached a high level of discussion, but we are very sure that it will not use, be used as a political carrot. There is hope for the people of Central Province. They hope the people of Kawe that uh, at another time, Lugush Dexter will be up and running and how people are going to get the jobs and the business opportunities because that's what we are looking for. We are there to create jobs and business opportunities. So it's not a dead issue, it's a very live issue mm -hmm. under discussion and at an advanced level. Interesting. Interesting. Well, we have a, what other prospects are there in Central Province in terms of manufacturing? Because all the time we talk about the manufacturing sector in Central Province, we only talk about the Mulungushi textiles, a dead elephant, and what other things are you known for? Are you able to point out probably two industries that are viable and are benefiting the people? First of all, uh, Central Province is a giant in the agriculture sector. Yes. We produce 50% of the wheat mm -hmm. in this country. We lead in the, in the maize production and many other farm products. So we are seeing that the, out of that, if wheat is being processed in, in central province, we are going to create more jobs and business opportunities. Under the agriculture sector, for now, we are seeing some industries coming in. We have got an, a, a, an oil refinery uh, plant, which is being uh, constructed in Kapirimposh district to process soybeans into oil. That is opening any time this year. Mm -hmm. We're expecting more jobs to be created there. And also we have got another industry under agriculture, the marigold farm in Chibongo district, where they are growing marigold and they are putting up a plant to start processing that marigold into other byproducts. Mm -hmm. Currently at the farm, that the marigold farm is, has got the capacity to employ up to 10,000 people. 
when they open the plant, expecting more jobs to be created. And also we are seeing progress on the end phase in Chilombo district, mm -hmm. where more industries are coming in. For your own information, in the central province, it's one that uh, many people do not understand the geography of central province. Make us understand. Make us understand. I hope you are aware that mm -hmm. most of these industries you see in six miles, ten miles, they are all under central province. In Chiwombo. <laughs> Mount Meru mm -hmm. is under central province, in Chiwombo district. But so we have got so many industries, so many industries. We have got the industries that are processing cassava mm -hmm. into uh, 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 oil. So all these are industries that are in central province. Other than Murungush, there are other industries that are in central province. They haven't been talked about as much. Is, is it we because of the people. information flow or you're not confident that these are things you can talk about publicly? Well, maybe not really that we have not uh, talked much. I think we are doing everything possible as provincial administration to make our people get to know what is in, in Central Province. Central Province is a very great attraction of many investors in the different sectors of the economy. So, information, yes, maybe we need to improve. There is a concern that um, in terms of um, infrastructure development, this administration is not uh, paying attention to that. And that uh, let's uh, talk about uh, uh, Central Province itself. What, uh, what are the priorities in terms of infrastructure development, uh, like uh, feeder roads and um, uh, in major roads as well? What, what, what is on the table at the moment? What's on the table in terms of road infrastructure development? Mm -hmm. I cannot say that this government is not very much. Mm -hmm. I think this government probably has taken a different trajectory. Which people are opposing, vulnerable. Others, mm -hmm. how they were doing. Others had concentrated resources at mm -hmm. the central level. Yes. This government has decentralized the resources to the grassroots. There's no time when a constituency would receive 28 million, not even a district. So, this government has sent the money to the grassroots mm -hmm. so that people can decide, make decisions on what are the priorities that they need in many of the areas in central province when we talk of feeder roads. Yes, central province is in an agriculture uh, province. So feeder roads are very critical, very, very critical in every district because our farmers need these uh, uh, good roads for them to move their produce to the market. Mm -hmm. And now what have we done? We have given the money at district level. We have got money. There is no MP who can say that there is no money in the constituents. So it depends on those individual constituencies, the decisions that they make. In Mumbai, we have seen that two weeks ago, we are commissioning the procurement of a grade. Mm -hmm. That is to work on the feeder roads so that we become more effective and more efficient for the benefit of our people. And I've seen this happening in many, many constituencies. So meaning, in the next few months, every constituency will embark on the maintenance of the feeder roads. When you talk of the trunk roads, big roads, economic roads, already in central province, our main road is the Great North Road. Which is the center the of controversy. The famous Lusaka Ndola Dio Carriageway. We are it's, coming to that. It's, it is the Great North Road. Mm -hmm. And there is a milestone there. <laughs> and we are very excited about it. It's a great achievement by this government. You are coming there. We are coming there. <laughs> we are coming so to the Lusaka Ndola Dio is highly committed and the people of central province as see has just arrived mm -hmm. with the Great North Road. The Great North Road is coming with other benefits because even township roads in some districts will be attended to. So it's a milestone for us. Now honorable now that you mentioned this the, the, the dual carriageway which uh, partly central province is equally benefiting from now there's been a concern to say 25 years for that concession agreement is just uh, too long and, uh, and that uh, this government has not been proactive in engaging mm -hmm. people to uh, appreciate the process or what you want to do and that the, most of the people were shocked by the signing of uh, that concession. It is also shocking mm -hmm. that people were shocked because this is not a new mm -hmm. uh, issue. 
is something that has been on the table for quite a long time. The previous regime mm -hmm. talked about the, the road mm -hmm. in a different style, at an expensive cost. And this new government has taken that same arrangement that the road must be fixed. Now, mm -hmm. the only thing that the, this government has done, we do not have money. Because the previous regime depleted the treasury. How do we do it? We need the road. We don't have the money. Let's find a way how we can do this road because it is actually a need and at a lower cost. And that has been achieved at a lower cost without spending. So as people of Central Province, we are saying that as we are very excited because we are seeing a number of factors out of this uh, construction of this uh, draw carriageway. We are mm -hmm. seeing jobs there, mm -hmm. we are seeing business opportunities there, we are seeing safety of our people. These mm -hmm. weekly accidents, we are seeing that uh, they will be a thing of the past. And we are going to enjoy mm -hmm. a modern road. The argument also, uh, Minister, is that the actual price of constructing that road is not what was signed for. You need to calculate how much they will get from the tours for a period of 23, 22 years. I'm meant to understand three years is for construction. So 22 years, how much are they going to collect will reflect the actual cost of that road. And some people argue to say they will get more money than what they put in. What is Did also, you think about that, or you are just excited about the opportunities it will bring in terms of employment creation for your people, safety for the people? You didn't think about the tie that it's bringing to the people. Okay, what we can also say is that, mm -hmm. uh, as provincial administration, we are there to coordinate government programs in the province. We are there to supervise what is brought to us. We are not part of the negotiations, mm -hmm. we are not there. But what is supposed to be very, very important is that uh, even those who have got uh, different views about it, who are worried about the cost and the period, is to get to the agreement itself, understand what is in the agreement. Because there is mm -hmm. an agreement there. There are, there are three players involved in here. Mm -hmm. There is the government, the Republic of Zambia, there is a consortium, there is a contract. So, how this whole arrangement of uh, collection toll fees is going to happen is that uh, even Zambia, as a part of that consortium, will be beneficial, will be mm -hmm. also receiving something out of that collection. It's not a complete thing that uh, uh, Zambia will stay away, but we are benefiting in the 22 years, <laughs> or three years, that uh, the road will still be maintained by the consortium. Y yes, and um, uh, honorable, you mentioned an important aspect to say when you were taking over government, you inherited empty coffers from the patriotic front. However, uh, I do not remember at a point in time when we stopped paying for toll fees, even under central province. We should have to should we have two or three to toll fees. In fact, yeah, from Chibombo there, we should have three. We, are, we are, we've never stopped correct, uh, collecting revenue from those to 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 prizes. Now, how has, has been this administration utilizing those resources we are getting from uh, uh, toll fees? Because those resources need to go towards uh, road maintenance and uh, road construction. But this government is not telling the people how much it is, it is realizing through those uh, toll fees. Even in Central Province for for this year, we haven't heard anything. Well, Central Province, what we can say is that. In provincial administration mm -hmm. do not receive money or revenue from mm -hmm. the collections that takes place in the jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. It is all centrally controlled. So if there is any concern of any citizen or a group of citizens about how government utilizes the money, mm -hmm. I think that's the role of the, of the officer of the Auditor General. Yeah, because there's we been all these mm -hmm. financial statements, financial mm -hmm. reports, and we need to read and know how government is spending. Mm -hmm. There's a national budget where we have indicated the source of income, the source of revenue comes from all these uh, different different sources, taxes, mm -hmm. fee collections, and many other licenses. It goes into control, right? And then 
That's where we pay salaries. That's where we pay all these other things. But what we are saying is that, for example, if we are paying uh, emoluments, we are paying uh, debt servicing, according to what we are seeing in the budget, mm -hmm. is that 80%, 90% is going to be taken away. And we are going to remain, we remain just with 10%. Now, what can we do as a country to bring development with 10% of the 23 a billion dollars. What can we do? So that's the reason why other governments were borrowing because we didn't have enough. Mm -hmm. Even now, we didn't. Have, we don't have enough. But we should find other means without borrowing, without continuing borrowing, that can sustain the country in terms of development. To say the least is mm -hmm. that other issues definitely there supposed to be handled at another level and at our level we have got other issues that yeah, interesting now, but the other thing Chan, the, the matter of concern is that the government is delegating its duty to manage public infrastructure to, a, to private entities and that's what Zambians are also questioning to say but this road is an entitlement of the Zambian government uh, and they have to manage it on behalf of uh, the citizens and now they want to the, a, a private entity to be running it now how many things are the private uh, sector going to take over Zambians feel they may reach a point they don't own anything well I, I also don't really understand how many of us take these arrangements the PPP is not something which is peculiar for Zambia. Mm -hmm. It's a process that has been used mm -hmm. elsewhere. Even in some bigger economies have used PPPs to develop their countries. Mm -hmm. South Africa here mm -hmm. and in Europe, other countries have gone on the PPP arrangement to ensure that they are able to develop their countries and save their people efficiently and effectively. It's mm -hmm. another method that you can use so it mm -hmm. is something probably others are hearing it for the first time. It just needs information flow to make them understand mm -hmm. what are the implications so that those worries are put aside. But what is critical here is that Zambia is going to benefit. And as a central province, <laughs> we are enjoying <laughs> what has come to us. <laughs> Let's bring it to your life. Let's bring it to your benefits for the young people. Obviously, there's that 20% uh, self-destruction for the local contractors. It's been there, but it hasn't been fully actualized. How will you ensure that, indeed, that 20% goes benefits, to your uh, people? Benefits in central province. Because that is the economic benefit that they will get first before they even start using the road. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I'm aware of the challenges of the 20% where someone scrupulous contractors have actually used our people using the same twenty percent. Because what they prescribe at under the twenty percent are those small small jobs that they give to them. Probably a contract of say out of the whole six hundred million. You say we are going six million six hundred million dollars. Then you give you someone one million budget mm -hmm. subcontract. Then at the end of the day they tell them that we don't have the competence. Can we buy you out? Then they do the costing because of probably the poverty levels. Mm -hmm. Someone is given a hundred thousand budget and walks away, and they continue working. Mm -hmm. So we need to sensitize our people to understand what they are supposed to do. They are supposed to be competent. In the in the previous regime, this I can confirm with you when I took up office. Also, contractors they were overwhelmed with the cadaisi. Because what was happening was that a, a contractor is given a contract. Then other subcontractors mm -hmm. are sent by the government or by the party itself. A number of them through RDA mm -hmm. that they just write a letter. Accept this one is a subcontractor because he's a partner. That also spoiled things. We don't need to work like that. You send someone who has got no competence, you send someone who gives him a piece of work to do, this is what you are going to do, he has got no equipment. What he's expecting is that the contractor should give him an advance payment. Mm -hmm. And by what we have, by experience, how many of these 
some of these so-called contractors, Zambian contractors, local contractors, got money from local government, got contracts and adverse payments. What do what did they do? They did nothing. So that was the trend. So we need to reverse that. We need to have a, a change of mindset that when someone is given a job to do, he should have the competence, he should be able to do the work to the standard of the contract. Because if that person does not meet the standards, definitely it's the contractor, the main contractor who is in trouble. So we need to engage our youths, we need to engage our people, we need to engage our local people that we have taken upon ourselves as central promise because we want the four districts where the road, the Great North Road traverses through, our contractors, our young people should be given the priority to benefit out of that. But we have to make them be competent to work to the standard of the contract under the main contract. So that we are doing and we are managing. We are ready, we are set. Interesting. We just hope uh, young people can take advantage of that, especially the contractors and benefit from uh, that uh, uh, intervention. Uh, yeah, they, they, I hope they have been taught to form cooperatives the as well. Cooperatives. Yeah. Cooperatives have been already formed. <laughs> so they are the ones that are going to benefit from this. Hopefully, <laughs> we will keep track and see yeah. that uh, your people benefit. If other people from Lusaka come there and say we are part of the beneficiaries, more question.